Hey John, what are we seeing here? It looks quite broken up. Yes, this is a classic example of uh, andesite lava flows, which are flowing over quite undulatory topography and breaking up to form autoclastic breccia. And autoclastic breccia is basically a lava flow which, uh, bearing in mind that these are andesites and therefore are significantly more viscous than basaltic magmas, uh, they tend to break up. And we can see here that this, the outer portion of the flow is red and red oxidized, but it's actually breaking up. And you can see little pieces of red inside and so on. And it welds together, it's still hot and sticky, and it will weld back together again, forming what we refer to as an autoclastic breccia. And this is a classic, beautiful example of it in the side lava. Let's have a little look here at the andesite. Oh, you can see the feldspars. And a few pyroxenes as well, a few dark yeah, a few things. pyroxenes there, those little dark ones there. Let's see. Yeah. And uh, the plagioclase feldspars, these white ones. Ah, yeah. Nice andesite. Now, in the basaltic world, this would be more like a a type flow, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it would be. In, say, some place like Iceland or thereabouts, uh, this would be uh, referenced as an AA lava. Right. And then, of course, you have all sorts of pyroclastic material here on top. Yeah. So, this is within the stratigraphy. And these, these, this pyroclastic material that overlies this, these are airfall deposits which are presumably from uh, rotating volcano uh, from much younger eruptions. Yes. Wow. This gives rise to a tetrastratigraphy on the volcano overlying the lava flows. Very good. Shall we walk down a few steps here? Because yep, yep. there's some uh, massive material with uh, yeah. internal flow banding. It's rather nice, I think. Again, autoclastic breccia. Uh, the, the lava itself has some flow banding in it. Whoa. You can see here. Sorry, let colored, me just come around here otherwise. Dark and light colored bands. Could you put your finger there? John, just for a scale. Dark and lighter colored bands. This is variably oxidized. Some of it's oxidized, some of it's unoxidized. The dark, we can see the white plagioclase feldspar crystals here in abundance. Uh, because the pyroxene crystals are darker in color, they don't show out quite as well uh, against the background. Here's even some flow folding. My Lord, look at this. It's S-shaped folds yeah. here. Just Beautiful it, stuff. It just emphasizes how viscous the material is. Yeah, it's really like kind of honey, sort of cold honey kind of things it looks like. Is there a compositional difference between these bands? No, no. No, yeah, it's more is, like a bit more oxidized yeah, and oxidized uh, maybe versus, a bit more vesicular in yeah, places. Yeah. 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 I remember at uh, Merapi we had some different bands there as well and we tried to find out if there was a difference and they seemed compositionally very similar. It was only texturally a little different. Yeah, it's, it's a nice rock. How old would that rock be? What do you think? These are probably Pocapapa formation and age, uh, maybe 20,000 years or so. Very good. Uh, and very similar in age to lavas on the... Uh, the Fokapapa Valley side of the volcano. Yes. So here we get a good view of the clastic nature of this material. Quite broken up. Very spectacular example. This is a real, a wonderful textbook example of this type of pressure. Very good. Fantastic rocks. So, and just there in the distance, we see the snow-covered fields on the slopes of Ruapeo, where, of course, all these lavas are coming from. So, the peak is in clouds, but we can just see the upper slopes, a bit above 2,000 meters, and the total height of the volcano is 2,700 uh, something. So, uh, 
we are here in the upper portion of the volcano and these materials here would not have traveled very far from the uh, source but uh, they because of the high viscosity would have uh, built up the upper slopes of the volcano so and again we have the uh, pyroclastic material on top of it here and uh, that reflects these broken up uh, autobrachia flows that were within the stratigraphy of the volcano. So, and there we have the lowlands below the volcano and uh, we are obviously on a stratovolcano, so this is a nice little cone. And then we go through this forested area and into the lowlands around the volcano. And these, uh, of course, means that the stratovolcano is towering over the local landscape with a large kind of uh, fan or apron uh, that spreads all around the volcano making the area very very fertile uh, making the area kind of popular with agriculturalists and uh, well the area is famous for its large uh, carrots and uh, onions and things like that and potatoes so I uh, close here and I say thanks a million with the last look on uh, the autobrachial andesite lavas here what a spectacular rock it is